we could get the pet band to go down there. You also are a child, remember. <laughs> oh, it's the bell. Good morning. I know that our Sunday school group has made its way over. Um, I have chosen to put on my stole that is, it, they look like children. And our Sunday school teacher this morning reminded us that when the scripture uses children, it is referring to all of us because that is a way to tell us that we have come to, to learn and that the teacher is present. So, um, so there we go, the children. And that's in that, we, you'll see Psalm 34 every second Sunday, and that's part of why it reminds us of that place where we sit at the feet of Jesus and we study scripture and we are, we are transformed. So, all right. Um, we are... On, on this particular Sunday, saving community announcements for prayer time. Um, that comes right before prayer time. That's part of putting all of this together. But um, that means we go ahead and begin with the prelude. And then we do Thanksgiving at the font with the kids. And I'm making sure all of them are here. And we are low on kids. Plenty of teenagers. We might have to bring the teenagers up. So, all right, Marianne, are you ready for Prelude? Let's go ahead and listen to the Prelude then. So I, Clara, you're you're my kid that's going to help with Thanksgiving at the font today. So why don't you come on up? We're going to have to enlist help in other ways. Oh, we have someone back there too. Do you guys? On this second Sunday, we um, kids have more things they get to do, and um, one of the things we do is we check out the water up here the waters of that we are reminded were baptized. So um, one of you, Clara, do you think you can be the girl who carries this for me? It's my big pitcher of water. It's kind of heavy. Is that okay? All right. Oh, we got two little girls coming. That's awesome. Yeah, we come up here. And we're reminded how um, journey begins, whether we're old, whether we're young. When we say we want, um, we want to be part of God's family, we come to this font. And um, it's at the font we're reminded of that. So I'll take a hold of that here. Here, girls, what do I have in my picture? What do I have in here? What's in there? Water, right. Got water in here, and Claire, why are, why do we have water again? And we were, because we're at the font, and 
what happens here. We are, we are baptized here. All right. So I ask the rest of you to stand with me, and we're going to do our Thanksgiving at the font. And I'm going to say a line, and then you guys can repeat my line back. All right? So the first line is, we praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. And I'm putting some in. We need water to drink. We need water to drink. We need water to wash. We need water to wash. We need water to grow. We need water to grow. So sometimes we put water on our plants, don't we? That's an extra line. We praise you, O oh God, for water. We praise you, O oh God, for water. We praise you, O oh God, for baptism. We praise you, O oh God, for baptism. We praise you, O oh God, for your spirit. We praise you, O oh God, for your spirit. Okay, I'm going to pour the rest of the water in. If you want it to go over your hands, you can put your hands up here. Can you guys reach? I forget. Yeah, and then I can pour that over your hands. You can remember what the water feels like. Was well, she's going to? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Now, one of the next things we do is we put this on our forehead when we are baptized, and it reminds us that we belong to Jesus. So you can do that, too, if you want to put water on yourself. That's just fine. Yeah. So we praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. Amen. Amen. Now, if you want to take some water back to share on somebody else's forehead or somebody you know, go ahead. You can even put it on the dolly if you think you want to. <laughs> Woo! Woo! All right. And you guys can go ahead, and we'll have more to do when we keep going today. So... um, we are going to all sing together as rain from the clouds. And that tells us about what we're learning from God's word. And um, I got to look at the number. 166. No, is that correct? In renewing worship. Verses 1 and 3, even though it looks like we have more in there. <clears throat> Wait. As rain from, from the clouds will your word come to earth. As snow from the heavens refreshing the land. Then soften our soil that the good seed may grow and ripen rich fruit to return to your hand. Praise you, our God, for the dew of your word. We thank you, good gardener, for your tender toil. We bless you, best farmer, for hundredfold yield, for harvest of grace in our once barren soil. As rays of the sun shall your word light the world, awaking and warming and healing our land. Then shine in our hearts that the good seed may grow and ripen rich fruit to return to your hand. We praise you, our God, for the light of your word. We thank you, good gardener, for your tender toil. We bless you, best farmer, for hundredfold yield, for harvest of grace in our 
once barren soil. For our um, confession and forgiveness today, um, Mercy Me has a song called You Are I Am, and it, it mentioned the stories we're covering today, and I begin and then you respond. So we've been the ones to shake with fear and wonder if you're even here. We've been the ones to doubt your love. We've told ourselves you're not enough. We've been the ones to try and say we'll overcome by our own strength. We've been the ones to fall apart and start to question who you are. You're the one who conquers giants. You're the one who calls out kings. You shut the mouths of lions. You tell the dead to breathe. You're the one who walks through fire. You take the orphan's hand. You are the one Messiah. You are I am. We've been the ones held down in chains beneath the weight of all our shame. We've been the ones to believe that where we are, you cannot reach. You're the one who conquers giants. You're the one who calls out kings. You shut the mouths of lions. You tell the dead to breathe. You're the one who walks through fire. You take the orphan's hand. You are the one Messiah. You are I am. So we call on you, the great I am. Come meet us in this place. Okay. Um, I'm going to have you all be seated to begin our hymn of praise. We're doing this on our second Sundays just so we all move as older folk and the little ones get to um, show us how easy it is to move. And so we're doing the Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. And let's switch you up. I think you all were praise you the Lord last time. So you all are going to begin with this side's the Alleluia, Alleluia, and this side's praise you the Lord. And we'll see if we can tilt the building, you know, as we go up and down. And if you can't go up and down because your legs are that way, do like hands up when you're singing your part, okay? Because that's good for us. All right, so let's start over here. Marianne, give me a note you think is good. Okay. All right. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 Praise ye the Lord. Should we do it again? No. <laughs> Sophie said no. Sophie, you're not a queen yet. So, all right. Okay. Then let's do it again. Let's just do it again. The adults want to do it. All right, are we ready? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Amen to that. Okay, everybody can take a seat. We will say our prayer of the day together. I can turn pages today. All right. Let's pray. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your spirit to know those things that are right and by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Grow our trust in your beloved care as we live in the righteousness to which we are called through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. All right, we're going to hear from the very end of that Daniel story that we heard earlier, in, if you were in that Sunday school session.
Good morning. Now that we've had our morning aerobics. The first reading is from the sixth chapter of Daniel. Then at dawn, the king got up and at first light hurried to the den of lions. When he came near the den where Daniel was, he cried out anxiously to Daniel, O oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you faithfully serve been able to deliver you from the lions? Daniel then said to the king, O oh, king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so that they would not hurt me because I was found blameless before him. And also before you, O oh, king, I have done no wrong. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no kind of harm was found on him because he had trusted in his God. Here ends the reading. Um, we look at Psalm 34 for our psalm and we're doing verses 4 through 11 and we're reading responsively by half verses. And so we begin at verse 4. We're on page 231 in the front of your hymnal if you need that as a guide, the green one. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and they will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. All right. Um, our second reading is um, from Acts 16. These men, these Jews, are disturbing our city and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us, being Romans, to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he threw his sword and was about to kill him. He drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself for we are all here. The jailer called for lights and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they answered, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. Here ends the reading. Please stand for the proclamation of the gospel. <laughs> gospel reading today is from the 21st chapter of Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, we're going to listen to a parable, but it's good to remember that the parable is being told to the religious leaders who are plotting Jesus' death. 
and um, Jesus teaches in, to them and in their midst, even as that is what's happening around him. Jesus said to the people, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. And then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. And when the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get this inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? And they said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. And Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. And when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that Jesus was speaking about them. And they wanted to arrest him. But they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. All right, you may be seated. All right, um, I want us to review really quickly what was happening in our lesson from Acts. And to do that, I need some actors. We're going to start with our kids. We're going to start with them. And um, we're going to start together. We're going to come up here because when we heard from Acts today, we heard about two missionaries who were out trying to tell the story of Jesus and their name were Paul and Silas. So I need a Paul and I need a Silas. Clara, it's okay. I know it feels lonely. I'm here. I'll be here with you. Okay. Um, and just be warned, big people, you're going to need to help out. If they are ready to come, they can come. If they're like, no, we're not doing it again, that's fine too. I will work with what happens. So, yeah, I think we're going to make those two little ones, Paul and Silas. I think we are, if they come together. Oh, and we got a doll. We could make a doll, Paul, one of the, we could. And Rosie's coming too. Hey, Rosie, awesome. Okay. So we're going to pretend you two are Paul and Silas. All right. So. Why don't you come? Clara and I are going to be on both sides. And if you guys could get in the middle between us, Clara, why don't you stand right here, right here, and face me. And where I'm going to stand here. Can you two stand right there together? Will that work? Awesome. Awesome, Rosie. Okay. Yeah, we got, we got three counting. Okay, so you guys are there. Now, we're going to talk a little bit as adults why Paul and Silas ended up in jail. But they didn't, they were there not because they did anything bad. They just healed somebody that people were like, oh, we don't want you to heal that person. They're making money for us. What's this? 
remember this is my um this is my sign that I serve because it's like my yoke and you will have to explain that and the that's my sound it's my sound it makes me loud you hear how loud I am yeah I'm loud all right now so they got put in jail Clara, you and I are going to be the walls of the jail. We're going to hold our hands out here. Now, yeah. Now, what do you two think? Do you think you'd be able to get out if you had to get out? <laughs> yeah, it's already, we're demonstrating. We're already demonstrating. Okay, so now I am going to, I'd like this front row of people, all of you, to come and you we heard in our passage that they were worried Paul and Silas would get out. So then they made a second wall around them. So you guys come around, be our second wall. All right. It's harder to get out now, isn't it? We're kind of inside. And that's what they did. They put Paul and Silas inside the outer walls and they locked them in. Well, you know, we need it. We need to think about those of us that are walls. What would happen if an earthquake came? What would happen to us? <laughs> and what if the earthquake was really, really bad? Would we be able to stand up? No, we'd end up falling to the ground. Yes, we would. And that's what happened. So do you guys think you could get out now? They're like, what the heck did these people do? Could we get out now? Yes, we could. What do you think, Claire? We could get out now, couldn't we? Yeah. And they are doing exactly what Paul and Silas did, though. They didn't get out. They wanted to respect the laws that were going on there, and they stayed there because the jailer was super scared he was going to get in trouble and that they were going to leave. And they said, Hey, we're still here. Can you say, hey, we're still here? Hey, we're still here. And then they started talking together. And they told that little jailer about who Jesus was. And then he said, hey, come home with me. Because do you think everybody was safe after the earthquake or a little cut up? Or what do you think? Yeah, it was hard on them. And then they went to the jailer's house and they took care of their wounds. And then they told them even more about the Jesus who loved them. And they all decided to get baptized. All of them. Jailer and his family. And that's how the story went. Pretty cool story, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I know. So let's hear some applause for all of us up here. All right. Hey, let's say a quick prayer before everybody heads out. Quick prayer. All right. Repeat after me. Dear, dear Jesus, dear Jesus, we love, we love that you love us, that you love us. Amen. Okay. We can head on back. You guys were so awesome. I don't know if you know how awesome you are. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> you guys owe that mom a lot. You do. Okay. All right. So we got to review that story from Paul and Silas. And we didn't listen to how Paul and Silas got into jail. And I want us to hear that just really briefly um, because it is, it, is, it is really quite, quite awesome. So it was just a few more verses. And this is how the episode began. One day as we, and it was Paul and Silas, were going to the place of prayer because they were in Philippi, we met a slave girl, okay, so um, maybe Sophie's age, okay, she's a slave, we have to think about that, um, and she had a spirit of divination, she could tell the future, 
And her owners, her little slimy owners, they made a great deal of money by making her tell fortunes. So really kind of yucky people and a yucky life. Um, but she started to follow Paul and Silas because they're inviting, they're kind, they're loving. Um, so she follows and she would say to everyone, because she was able to see through to what was true, she would say, um, these men are slaves of the Most High God and they are proclaiming to you the way of salvation. So she was like this outside confirmation of what they were saying. She kept doing this for many days. So this is going on and on and on. Okay, Paul was like, I really don't want this to happen anymore. Maybe it's that he sees these slimy men are following her around and making money off of her. And he gets very annoyed and he says to the spirit in her, he says, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out at that very hour. It came out. She is kind of restored to who she was before they got a hold of her and started to make money off of her. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them to the marketplace in front of the authorities. And that's where we picked up the story. And they said, these men are disturbing our city. You know, they're disturbing our city. They, <laughs> they were trafficking a young woman and saying, we are going to use her for money. All right. And the crowd um, sa and says, it's not lawful for us as Romans. And the crowd joins in. And um, then they have this scene where they move out off to jail. All right. And then we hear the story about what happened in jail as our young people so beautifully told us. Now, um, I keep notes about a lot of things, and um, we studied this passage together as a congregation in May of 2019. It was Easter season. We were going through the Acts passages. We were with a group that was looking for where God was at work in passages. And um, believe it or not, I recorded all those. <laughs> <laughs> I do that, don't I? Um, so we did the same questions. And some of you that have been in council and have been at um, planning retreats and things like that know we go through these questions. What is God doing in this passage? That's always one of our things. And then we plaster our remarks all over. And um, that group said, God frees despite opposition. God adds believers. God speaks to us so we will listen. God's Spirit baptizes. And those were some of the things they found right away when they listened to that whole narrative. So do you see other ways God is at work? I want you to start to think about that. And um, you can turn to chapter 16 in Acts in your pew Bibles or Bibles that you brought, and you can share that with the person next to you. Anything else you see God doing, despite um, in that whole passage, Acts 16, um, beginning at verse 16 and going through 34. So what is God up to? When you see God acting, what do you see going on? Okay, so in your little families or with your partner, what else is God up to? I need to have. So 16 through 34 of chapter 16. Yeah. 
Help people find it if they can't find it. That is the rule. It's not ju no judging. You can't find things. Just have somebody. It's page what? Page 963 in those little pew Bibles. Some of you have these in your pews or you carry them around. I'll get you the page number for that too. All right, so what else might God be doing? Take a little time. You're like, well, Pastor, you're supposed to tell us what God is doing. But we all need, you guys see things that sometimes I don't see. And that's good. Cast out, so God is casting out demons. Yeah, God is removing those evil spirits. Causes the earthquake. Yes, good one. God does cause the earthquake. God sends the earthquake. Any others? Yes, it only affects the jail <laughs> somehow. Well, we don't know. I don't know if those, we just, I was just thinking what happens in an earthquake. So walls fall down. God sends the earthquake. Um, so the chains are broken. I mean, of all things, because they, it, it does tell us they are put into the stocks in that cell. And I didn't bring that up with those little... So they're in the central double-walled area. They're put in chains and stocks, and all of that gets destroyed. So God frees despite all the opposition. And they didn't leave. They didn't leave. So, and God protects them because... Really, they should have got out of there, but they trusted they were protected, which we saw this morning in Sunday school. We talked about that God protects, and we can trust that we're protected even when there's lion's mouths or even when we are put in jail. And um, so. Yeah, who had welcomed them into the city initially. Yes. Yeah. It's quite a chapter. So, yeah. Any other insights that are like, if I don't share this, I'm going to feel bad? Yes, Terry. Yes. Yes. They seem to be doing what Jesus did. You know, they're casting out the evil spirit and they say, I'm doing it in the name of Jesus. And then they, um, despite being hurt by those around them, they still have compassion on the jailer. Yes. Yeah. So somehow Paul and Silas have transformed the jail into this place of worship and prayer. So I think that, you know, they are open to that part of who they are. Now you're getting us into, because the other question we would always ask is, what is the early church doing? What are these church leaders doing? What are Paul and Silas doing? Um, in, in this in this particular and 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 that group back then said that they were praying and worshiping even in the awful situations they were witnessing and they were baptizing um, they were showing respect 
they were speaking and listening. Um, so those are things that they, that they saw going on with Paul and Silas. So you guys have started to drift into that. And obviously there's this understanding that God is the one that's inspiring this gathering, these leaders to continue to act as Jesus did. Yes, fear of the Lord, despite the opposition that's going on. I mean, everybody really hates them in that city. <laughs> they hate them. They want them out of there. So anything else that we see those early church leaders doing? I think you guys already covered many of those. All right. When that group looked at this again, they um, what could we learn from those early leaders for how we live our faith? I mean, what are the lessons we see in there? And um, I'm not going to share all these because you'll come up with it um, and, unless we get, but one of them that came up last time was look out, Holy Spirit, when that is present, look out. Um, any other things then that we could learn from how they were living and how they were dealing with the situation? It's not going to be easy. Her another one. When things get tough, pray and praise. Yeah, and sometimes those, those won't be our Father who art in heaven, they'll be, oh my, I need help. <laughs> Jesus, be here now. You know, they're those kind of, in those actual moments. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yes, we can expose ourselves, can expose who we are. Yeah. Yeah, he was always kind of operating that way. Operate in that way. You guys are comfortable working as a large group. But remember, if you don't feel comfortable, um, like Ava and I were whispering to each other during Sunday school because they wanted large group responses, but a we didn't feel like that. So we did whispering to each other. <laughs> so it's okay to do that. It's okay to do that too. So now that group... I'm just going to share what some of them were. Um, they also showed great acceptance. And they didn't, they weren't stuck on judging. You know, it's like, well, you're the jailer. I'm not going to share with you. You're, on, you're the opposition. I'm not going to share with you. It was like, there was always a sense of compassion. And even though Paul is quite annoyed with the young woman, Paul is like, can see what is needed for her, that she come out from underneath um, the slavery that she is in. So, um, yeah, so willing to think through, well, that's how I feel in my gut, but I can move beyond that because this is what Jesus does. Um, someone at that time said, this shows you um, how to live even if um, it's your last day, you know, because Paul and Silas are in the jail, but next thing usually in that Roman Empire is, is execution. So often that's how they dealt with troublesome folk, um, was to execute. And um, so one of the things that, that I think I saw connecting between the Sunday school lesson we had is that... Um, God is in charge. 
even when we cannot see that. And Paul and Silas are living as if Jesus Christ is Lord, which is master. And um, God had made that plan to connect to us in Jesus Christ. And that's what they live on. That's what they live on. It's as if that's all they need to know. We heard in our um, gospel lesson today that Jesus is a rock that you can um, have stand on. It can be your hard basis for everything, um, or it's going to be the tripping spot. And um, God's going to move mountains and send earthquakes and break down prisons of every type and frustrates those who stand in the way of us being able to seek God. All else has to get out of the way. Um, we see that going on. Now, it's interesting that as that passage ends, the jailer has had compassion shown him, and then he goes on and says, what must I do to be saved? And Paul and Silas don't say, well, we'll explain what happened to the authorities so that you'll not be persecuted for letting us out of jail. They don't say that at all. They say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And um, we were talking about that's the thing we can stand on. And despite our fear, we're good. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. So um, I want you to do this as you go from this place or as you're thinking in response to this on your own, um, think about your last week. We did this together. We counted our blessings. And um, see where you had your highs. Um, see where you think, well, God was probably at work here. Um, and this was probably where I could stand on God and God was making sure I had a firm foundation. And then also think, were there struggles? Were there the times when you could, like we had Daniel, you could see the lions around you and you thought they would bite, but God shut their mouths. Um, that you were in the middle of a prison and yet God set you free. Um, so think about those in relation and Think about your connection to those stories. Um, for those of you that were in both sessions, you get both those stories to look at. For those of us just here, you might, you'll need to remember um, Daniel in the lion's den and the part that we sometimes forget. We remember that God shut the mouths of the lions. But all that, um, that Daniel had that relationship with the leader of the empire. And it is the leader of the empire who is so moved by Daniel. And at the end, he says, everyone needs to worship his God. Everyone needs to worship his God. So quite a transformation. So think those through and think about what is that going to change for this next week as you travel into the next week. So really let these stories live in you. Um, our story is embraced by God's story. And these, both these um, narratives really let us see what God's up to in our lives. Um, so do that with one another if you have a chance to pray for one another in that. We do it in a really rudimentary way. And um, I don't want to call it rudimentary. You guys are way more mature than that. In our catechism class, we've been working really hard at seeing that presence of God and then praying with and for one another. When we see that at work, we say thanks. We ask for God to help us with the struggles we have. When the lion's mouths are open and we are worried. So um, let's pray. I'll pray for you. Dearest Jesus, I thank you that you have come among us to show us the heart of God and we thank you for our scripture word that expresses all those ways and helps us to see that you are not a distant God. Um, you are a God that wants to be in the midst of our lives, loving and caring for us. It's in your name we pray.
Amen. Um, our next hymn, you got to use your bulletin or you got to use your digital. Um, I took I took great liberties to take an existing hymn and fit it to our stories for today. <laughs> so um, God's story is our story raised. And um, so let's um, we're singing to the old 100th hymn and and tune and you'll recognize that too. So let's do we no we sit for this hymn. That's right. God's story is our story raised. We celebrate with songs of praise for Christ through whom all things were made. Himself has studied and has prayed. So Daniel trained his mystic sight. Delivered from the lion's might, and Paul the jailer's friend became, and baptized in the triune. Then grant, O oh God, that we may to return in faith and trust to you. Our spirits strengthen with your grace, although at times the earth might quake. Um, we're going to share the words of our faith as brought together in that Apostles' Creed. Please rise as we say that together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he descended again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right. Um, you may be seated. Put our focus now on our life together. Um, and that even includes announcements. And those are usually connected to ministries we share together. I want you to note that Elaine has given us the details for ordering poinsettias already um, because it's October and it's time. Um, anything to add besides what's in there? Elaine's your contact person. She'll have details and she also would like your actual money when you, when you do those orders. Um, coming up, we have counseled this Wednesday night. And um, council members, you're going to be wa watching your email for all your stuff we send around to one another. And um, we have progressed on our plans for Hope Strong. Um, one, of, um, one of the needs we have that we keep, at, if you are out there hiding the fact that you are um, certified to drive a bus, we really would like to know. And um, if you're just, I want to be in on this, but I'm not sure how, um, Lewis will be able to get you connected that way. Um, once we get more connected to how many kids we've got, we, uh, we've we mentioned we want some prayer partners for those kids, but we have to get a better idea of them. And they'll be pray this month um, for the kids as they get exposed and invited to the materials that are coming through at school. Um, our little folders go up in a corner. We get to be on announcements. So pray for that whole process. Um, the, those papers go home to parents because we have to have parental. And um, so that's, that's a dicey, vulnerable process for those of us that have boys, especially. To <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's that way with girls. I don't know. 
they never bring anything from to home from school. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so that's going on. Those are ways you can pray. And any other announcements I'm missing, leadership people? Okay. Let's recognize um, who's celebrating. Um, Terry and Suzanne already shared that it's their, how many anniversary? It's their 40th wedding anniversary, and it's this day. So you're not having a baby today. You're not. Because cause they did one time. Yes, Stuart was born on their anniversary. So, yeah. So, um, blessings to you. Do we have anything else that's a, a good thing to share? Or a celebration. It's also Sally and Marvin's, like, today or coming up or past. It's today. How many for you? 58. Oh, Paul is clapping for you. Like, <laughs> Let's clap for our anniversary, folks. Yeah. And um, there are other ways to live our lives. So just remember, if you don't get clapped for, sometimes we get clapped for getting through life um, without someone to jabber with late at night. So. Yeah, so I wish we could somehow recognize that too. Celebration for me is I see Linda in the back row, back from recovery. So that's good to see. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, yeah. So any other celebrations? Claire, you turn eight Friday. Well, then come on up here. We're going to sing for you. Do we have anybody else? My, uh, Michael. Oh, Michael's a Saturday. Yes. I'm ready this year. So maybe that's why. And Caleb, but did Caleb go? I think they went. Yeah, they had to go. Okay. Well, you guys look about the same age. Birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Clara Michael. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Yeah. Clara, Michael has been standing up to have his birthday recognized since he was your age. I, you know, and look how look how he grew now. So you're gonna be that age someday. And we will be sad because we won't be able to be with you as much. So you'll be off doing wonderful things. No, mom is going to keep you home. Yeah. Well, we thank God for both of you. Michael, I give thanks for you. You, you are a boy of wonder. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, if Are there other um, requests and that need prayed for, things that need prayed for. Sophie has an announcement. So we can also, if we're at the event, scream too for you really loud. Okay. Yeah. Neil has all kinds of ideas. Yes, back there. So they're still there. So how about we go in-laws too for the name of the person you know? Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, that does actually happen to people we know at times with the world unsettled. Yeah. And let's let's keep mil Pardon me. Michael so Sue and Michael. Okay. And if you've got military family, all of these things bring uncertainty. Um I'm mindful of that a bit. So yeah. Yes, back there, Gary. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And thanksgiving for those who do eventually get released from their therapies, which um, Brent's mom was, they said, we, you are strong. We don't need to see you anymore. So yeah, that was good news for her to be pronounced strong enough. So, anybody else? Yes, Leslie. All right, that's good to hear. Anybody else, sir? <laughs> Thirty five years, you think? I get it is that way in the 30s. I'm somewhere in the middle of the 30s and I I have to like actually count the years. So yeah, it is that way. You have to <laughs> you're like Well, was this all the same time like everyone was like get married in October, it's the best time. September's the best. Okay. All right. Anything else? Now, um, one of the benefits of tying this to prayer time is that our prayer time is that time that we recognize that God's story is our story and God is working to be a uh, kingdom presence in this world. And it's through these stories and, um, and even um, a committed relationship witnesses um, even sometimes when a relationship doesn't last forever, but we are able to show others that we can pick up and go on and still have meaning, that's a witness. So, um, and so many ways that we witness, and it's through those stories. And others are so um, striking, they've made their way into our scripture. But those other stories, those ordinary stories, are still where God is at work. All right. Let's go ahead and pray then together. So I'm going to invite you to stand for our prayers if you are able, if you're able. And I would leave a spot. Um, when we're thinking of concerns, I'll just say in our hearts or out loud, okay? And um, that'll be a spot for us all. We trust in the transformative power of God's loving spirit. And we pray for the church and the world and all in need. God of all grace, you are the source of life and joy. Strengthen the resolve of your church throughout the world, especially where cultures clash and witness is difficult. That together we press on toward the goal of your heavenly call in Jesus Christ, God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all creation, you plant and nourish the earth as your own precious vineyard. Bless fields and orchards and the hands of those who labor in them. 
that your people are fed with an abundant harvest of good fruit and abundant grain. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all the earth, you desire peace and justice between nations and peoples. When, when we fight and when we have difficulties, people we know get caught in the crossfire. Families are changed. Um, we especially think about and pray for Sue and Michael this day. Guide leaders of nations and states, cities, counties, and townships that they faithfully govern your people with wisdom, integrity, and compassion. As you shut the mouths of the lions and kept Daniel safe, shun words of hatred, violence, and terror in all the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all compassion, in Christ, you lovingly poured yourself out like wine for your people. Have mercy on all who mourn, who struggle with their mental health, who cry out for justice, who hunger, who rebuild from natural disasters, and all others in any need. At this time, you may pray for those whose concerns are in your hearts, and you can do that silently or out loud. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all steadfastness, you set Christ as the cornerstone and foundation of the church. Remind us that a foundation in Christ is unshakable and will survive earth's quaking and unrest. Build up this congregation as living stones that we stand in the community as a witness to your enduring faithfulness and love. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of celebration and new life, we give thanks that you bless our lives with celebrations, that you bless um, our lives with the celebration of progress um, when we deal with health issues, the celebration of life together that survive many years no matter what those years have brought. Um, the celebration of life transformed when we thought there was no way forward. Celebrations of life where there is hope when once there was hopelessness. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all hope, the saints who came before us lived and died with their hearts fixed on you. We give you thanks for their faithful witness, and we wait with hope for the great day when we join their voices in praise. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Before we finish worship, we greet each other with peace this day. So the peace of the Lord be with you all. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you. How old are you today? He's nine. He's nine. Are you nine? That's all he is to me. He's nine. I keep saying. He's just nine. He, how did we get here? I don't know. <laughs> We're going to share our gifts then also with the offering. And I believe I need people to help. Yeah, let's get this rolling.
Go ahead. She's soft mic. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. Let us pray. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. Um, especially on these second Sundays, we are thankful for God's word. So we're singing... I love to tell the story. We're doing verses one and two with that chorus today. I love to tell the story to unseen things above of Jesus and his glory. Oh, Jesus and his love, I love to tell the story, because I know it's true, it satisfies my longings, as nothing else would do, I love to tell the story, I'll sing this theme in glory and tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story, how pleasant to repeat what seems each time I tell it more wonderfully sweet. I love to tell the story, for some have never heard the message of salvation from God's own holy word. I love to tell the story. I'll sing this theme in glory. 
and tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. So now let us go in peace to live and share the gospel of Jesus Christ through love and service to all. I want to remind us that we have a carry-in after worship. I forgot to mention that. Um, everyone is always invited. We tend to have enough food no matter who shows up. So, And we dig it out of the freezer if needed. So please come and join in the fellowship of lunch together. <laughs> 